Okay. Well, welcome to Wild Ones and today's program, Echo Regions and Ecological Communities in the Capital Region. Um, here at Capital Region New York, our chapter's mission is to promote increased use of native plantings that create living landscapes through grassroots efforts. Uh, we consist of an amazing and diverse group of people all sharing a common passion and goal. We invite you to join us in our efforts to network and educate eradicate unwelcome invasive species and incorporate native plants into our daily lives. I hope you consider becoming a member of our amazing team. And I'm sure Christy will be putting a link to our website in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to, our program today, Echo Regions and Ecological Communities uh, by Steve Young, botanist, um, is going to talk about the most beneficial plants to put in the right place. There are four echo regions in the Capital District, and we're going to take a look at what constitutes an echo region and an ecological community. Um, Steve, our speaker tonight, has uh, served as chief botanist for the New York Natural Heritage Program for 31 years, surveying for rare plants and invasive species throughout New York State. Presently, he is a botanical consultant who also serves as a board director for the Wild Woods Restoration Project and as a board member for the New York Floral Association. Please join us in welcoming Steve Young. And if you can, hold your questions until the end or place them in the chat. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? All right, good. Hi, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about the ecoregions and ecological communities in the capital region. And let's see if I can do this here. Okay. Um, and the goals of this program today are first to know why it's important to know about ecoregions, especially if you're interested in native plants, plantings. Second, what ecoregions we have here and what characterizes them. And then at a smaller scale, the what are ecological or natural communities and the characteristics that they have, and look, also look at some of the plant lists that have been developed for different ones. So it's important, why is it important to know about the ecoregions? Well, <clears throat> wild ones, advocates for selecting native plants and seeds or originating wherever possible from local or regional sources having the same environmental conditions. That's a local ecotype. And you should be selecting plants from your ecoregion uh, or surrounding ecoregions. And um, if you can't get them right from your ecoregion, you could get them from a nearby state, uh, the same native species that are in New York rather than the plants from your state from a different ecoregion within with the similar environmental conditions. So on the bottom here, we see a native plant garden out in, in Fredonia, actually, the Darwin Baker Library. A nice little planting here outside the library. And over on the right there are the native plants that they selected from their ecoregion and are growing in greenhouses there, which they use for that little garden. So here are the key reasons to choose local genotypes. Preserve the genetic diversity and integrity of native plants. You want it to preserve that genetic diversity within the species. And plants do vary genetically in their adaptation to environmental conditions. And this, this uh, results in various genotypes for the species over its range. So some plants are specialists. <clears throat> they they vary in genotypes over a short range. Others are generalists and they have less variation. But overall, we just don't want to homogenize our native flora. For example, down in the lower left hand, you, you see the range for common milkweed in the United States. And I'm sure there's probably some genetic variation in that whole range. We don't want to we don't want to select seeds or plants just from Wisconsin, say, and keep planting them in New York and homogenize our flora. We want to select from local genotypes. So 
sorry. We also want to help support other species, pollinators, birds, mammals, wildlife that have co-evolved with the lo local genotype plants and depend upon them for food, shelter, and a well-functioning habitat. For example, these tricolored bumblebees on common Joe pie weed. And the third reason is to ensure greatest success of your landscaping efforts. You wanna match your planting with your environmental conditions <clears throat> with the plant species in the natural, naturally occurring habitat. And that uh, helps your plants better thrive. And there are also complex interactions between species within habitats. So consider growing more than one species from the same habitat. For example, down below, we have some species, again, in Buffalo that were selected from local wetland areas. And here they are growing in a special uh, wetland area in one of the greenhouses. Okay, let's go on to what ecoregions are. And if you haven't already, um, there's a really nice map of New York ecoregions and the explanations of the level three and level four ecoregions online here. And there's a QR code there if you want to get to that website. It has a map and then these nice explanations and photographs. So what is an ecoregion? Well, they are regions that are geographically, geographically distinct. They have similar environmental and physical conditions, and they have similar assemblages of, of ecological communities, and we'll go through all these. So we did see that map of level three and four, but there are level one and two ecoregions also. If you go to this website called bplant.org, there's a nice interactive part of the website where you can look at different ecoregions and click on them. Uh, so here are the level one ecoregions. And in New York, we have Eastern temperate forests and Northern forests, the lighter blue. But those ecoregions are very large. So they encompass a lot of different plants and a lot of different genetic diversity. Level two ecoregions. Here in uh, the mountains, the highlands of New York, you have the Atlantic highlands, number one. And then over on the right, most of the, the lighter green there is mixed wood plains, and that extends all the way from Canada over to Minnesota. Then the Ozark, Wachita, Appalachian forests, number three there, that darker green, and that extends into New York in the Region Valley section. The southeastern U.S. plains, number four, which extends all the way down from Texas up into the northeast, mainly the Piedmont, which extends into New York and the Piedmont area in southeastern New York. And then the Mississippi alluvial and southeast USA coastal plain, which is along the, the coastal plain and extending up the, into uh, Long Island in New York, down into the southeast. We'll concentrate on level three and level four ecoregions. And here are the level three ecoregions across the United States. There's a lot of them. New York has a, a lot of ecoregions compared to some states. And you can see how they extend into other areas of the country. The Northeast Native Plant uh, Primer book from Yuli Lorimer, which came out recently. He has a nice little graphic here of the ecoregions in the Northeast. And you can see again how they extend uh, outside of New York into other parts of the Northeast. And he also states that using ecoregion uh, to, to determine what is considered native is a relatively new lens through which we can view the selection of native plants. These ecoregions, the EPA ecoregions, uh, were were um, formalized in the 2010s. But in New York, we have been looking at zones and ecoregions for a fairly long time. This is the first one I could come up with. It was in 1958. 
the forestry regions and subregions of New York State. And they were divided into, again, regions and subregions. You can see some of them down there, named the Adirondacks, Tug Hill, St. Lawrence, Champlain. And then um, I didn't put them all on there, but you can see, you know, for a fairly long time, we've been dividing New York into regions. And a lot of places, a lot of organizations and nurseries, uh, seed organizations are also using these ecoregions in their work. So you can see Wild Woods Restoration Project there with that orange arrow. They say, we work in ecoregions 64, 67, 58, and 59. And a lot of people talk about ecoregions by their number. So we'll look at the numbers in the, in the capital district. The fernery there in, uh, in uh, Hartwick, uh, north of Hartwick, New York, they uh, run by Connie Tedesco. She says she includes plants from, she calls them ecozones in the Northern Allegheny Plateau and the Mohawk Valley section of the Eastern Great Lakes Lowlands. And then down below there, you can see there's a seed collective with the eco region in their name. So they specialize in seeds from eco region 59, which in our area is uh, the Hudson Valley. So more and more people are using these eco regions and talking about them. So what are eco regions? Well, Let's go over this again. Regions that are geographically distinct. And in New York, you have um, ecoregions like Long Island, which are way in the southeast part of the state with uh, totally different ecoregions there along the coast. And then we have the Adirondack in the Highlands ecoregion, way in the north, with a number of different level four ecoregions. They have similar environmental and physical conditions. And what does that mean? Well, there's a bunch of, um, of these conditions that have been looked at over time and summarized for each ecoregion. For example, we have temperature. Here you can see the hardiness zones in New York. And if you look at Long Island, you have sevens down there and as you go north you get to six in the Hudson Valley and then up in the Adirondacks up to the fives which are a uh, much shorter growing season up there so you can see the temperature extremes we have a lot of different temperatures in New York even in the in the capital region there you see the difference between say the upper the higher elevations of Rensselaer County and Albany County and the elevation is down in the Hudson Valley. They're uh, different hardiness zones. And that plays a part in what ecoregion they're in. We look at precipitation. We have, um, again, differences in precipitation in different parts of the state. For example, in the Catskills there and southwestern Albany, um, Green County, you have a lot higher pres uh, precipitation, mainly from you know, interception of, of coastal storms. And then up in the Adirondacks, you have a lot of lake effect in the Tug Hill, Western Adirondacks, and higher elevations also. You can see in Northwest Saratoga County, there's more rain in that part also, which, which plays a part in what ecoregion it is, it is in. Geology is also a big factor in what ecoregion you're in. Some ecoregions have a very different bedrock than others. Some have very complicated bedrock. Some have a more homogeneous bedrock. So you can see down here um, in the Catskills and, and Allegheny Plateau, there's two different types of bedrock down there. If you get over to the Taconics, you have a lot of different bedrock. Up in the Adirondacks, a lot of different types of bedrock. And soil is derived from bedrock also. So 
you have different types of soils. Some have very distinct horizons. Some of them don't. In the, in the lower left, you, you have uh, a soil with not very distinct horizons. In the upper right, you have ones that have very distinct horizons, which are more high elevation soils and with higher rain. And then uh, soils have been mapped in New York for a long time, and we've been studying them for a long time. And then land use also is important <clears throat> in the ecoregion. You have urban areas in the red. See down New York City, Long Island, highly urbanized. Uh, the yellow is agriculture. So in the Mohawk Valley, you have more agriculture than you do, say, in the, the, the uh, Rensselaer Plateau there on the right, which is more forested. And um, you can see the urban areas of, of Albany and uh, Saratoga Glens Falls, mostly in the Hudson Valley. And the last uh, part of an ecoregion is the, the, what ecological communities they contain. They have similar assemblages of ecological communities. And we'll get into ecological communities a little bit later, but here's a, a nice shot of us of uh, iris and a uh, silver maple ash swamp in the Hudson Valley. So we'll focus on the ecoregions in the capital district. You, here you see all of the level three and level four ecoregions in New York, and we'll focus on the ones in that rectangle there. So here are the level three ecoregions. These are the larger ecoregions, the level four are the smaller ones. And I'm using the counties of Washington, Saratoga, Albany, Rensselaer, Schenectady, Green, and Columbia. Uh, you could extend that. Some people extend the capital region into those other three counties, Warren, Montgomery, and Schoharie, but they don't make that much difference in what ecoregion they are in. So ecoregion 58 is the, the higher elevation blue ones. 59 is the Northeastern Coastal Zone, or the, which contains the Hudson Valley. This extends south, actually, this whole uh, ecoregion ex extends south to, uh, to uh, New York City area. And uh, then that's in the green in the middle there. The Northern Allegheny Plateau in the, the gray north of the Catskills there and the Eastern Great Lakes lowlands, the tan there west of Schenectady. So what we'll do is we'll go over the characteristics of each one of them, look at the location, the climate, topography, geology, vegetation, and cultural characteristic of, of each one. Also, if you're trying to decide what ecoregion you're in, for example, here, if you're west of Schenectady, are you in the Mohawk Valley? Are you, are, are you in the Hudson Valley? There's a line there between those two. So a good way to figure that out, if you're really not sure, if you're on one of those lines, you can look at the ecoregional locator that's available at bplant.org in their ecoregion section. And here you can put in your zip code and then you can click on the map. Here I clicked on an area uh, north of, of Rotterdam Junction or east of Rotterdam Junction there along the Mohawk. And it'll give you your ecoregions there. One, two, three, and four. So it goes to, for all the way from Eastern Temperate Forest down to Mohawk Valley. Very helpful. And it's kind of interesting to go back and forth between the two to see where, where the line actually is. Um, that down here that uh, at the lower right where you had that industrial park west of Scotia. That's sort of the separation point between the Hudson Valley and the Mohawk Valley. Oops. So let's talk about these ecoregions. This is 58. So we'll talk about that first. Look over on the left there and you can see 
the orange outlines of where those, where that ecoregion is in the capital district. And on the right of that picture, you see the highlands of the Taconics, the Rensselaer Plateau, and the Taconic foothills extending down to Troy almost. And then up in northern, northwestern Saratoga County, you have the eastern Adirondack foothills and the acid sensitive Adirondacks. They're acid sensitive because there's more rain there and uh, um, the soils tend to be more acid. And then down in the Catskills in southern Greene County. So here the, the winters are typically with higher, colder than the surrounding lowlands, higher snow amounts, and shorter growing seasons. Uh, in the topography, you have high hills, mountains, and within there you have uh, high gradient streams, fast flowing streams, lots of lakes, lots of wetlands, lots of bogs. You can see a bog there on the lower right. <clears throat> more of a shrub bog. And the geology is pretty complicated and uh, often exposed at the surface. There are some sedimentary rocks, a lot of um, metamorphic, some igneous rocks, and the soils tend to be nutrient poor, frigid and cryic, meaning Cryic means they're cold and really cold soils. If we look at the vegetation, there's extensive forest cover. Uh, as you can see here in this map of, this is a Google map of uh, the Rensselaer Plateau, east of Berlin, and there's Cherry Plain State Park there. You can see it's very, uh, very forested there. Not much agriculture. And there's uh, hardwood forests uh, come up from in the lowlands from the south and coniferous forests from the north at the higher elevations. And this area, these highlands have always, um, they've always had low population. And uh, that's because they're hard to farm and also because uh, much of them are in preserves. Agriculture is limited to the richest soils, flatter areas, and there's a lot, there's lot, has been a lot of acid rain here in the past. The timber industry, recreation homes, and uh, their services are fairly common here. Sorry, the way this, um, it always seems to always go to ahead when I hit the go ahead button. All right, let's go to the next one, uh, 59. So for those of you who live in the Hudson Valley, uh, you're 59ers, and this is part of the Northeastern Coastal Zone. <clears throat> Here they're cold winters, hot summers, uh, usually a little warmer than uh, the surrounding highlands in the summer. And uh, precipitation is roughly equally distributed. Uh, there's snow in the winter, although we've been getting a lot less snow, it seems, lately. Rolling topography here interspersed with tall hills, and that's because it's a remnant of Glacial Lake Albany. And uh, there's the influence of the Hudson and the Mohawk rivers with uh, uh, flatter areas here than the surrounding areas. There you can see um, a barge on the Mohawk River with some marsh um, plants there in one of the marshes, the tidal marshes. And up on the hill there is Olana.
So we have a diverse bedrock in this whole ecoregion, igneous metamorphic, but in the capital region, it's mostly sedimentary rocks. And the soils are mostly sandy and gravelly, like in the pine bush. And uh, there's alluvium also from the rivers and stream deposits, especially along the Hudson. The vegetation uh, was covered by Appalachian oak forests, northeastern oak pine forests, and some inland pine barrens, like the pine bush. And here you can see a, a Google map again of the Albany area, just north of Albany. Um, there's lots of agriculture, lots of suburbs, urban areas. Uh, there is still significant forest cover, but it's it's mostly fragmented. There's small pieces of, of forest cover, woodlands that are interspersed with farms, urbanization, and then a lot of roads too, unlike the Rensselaer Plateau, with, which is mostly forested. Okay, here's our th uh, third ecoregion, number 60, the Northern Allegheny Plateau. And you can see on the left there is the outline of what's in the Capital District down in degree, uh, Southwestern Albany County, like Rensselaer, uh, Rensselaerville area, and down into Northern Greene County, uh, down to the higher peaks of the Catskill. So places like uh, Durham, uh, Greenville, Cairo, Cairo, places like that. So here we have hot summers, cold winters, and, and moderate snowfall, a little bit higher than the Hudson Valley just because of the, um, the higher elevations. So we have the glaciated Low Allegheny Plateau and also the, the Catskill transition zone, 60C. 60A is the northern part there. And then 60C, which is a little bit higher, the transition between the lower Allegheny Plateau and the higher Catskill transition. So this starts in uh, southwestern Albany County, where the Helderberg escarpment is, up onto the Helderbergs. The landscape is flat at the top of the plateau. So this is a plateau and you can see in the background there how flat it is at the top of the plateau. And then because of uh, glaciers and erosion from rivers and streams, there are hills and ridges and valleys throughout the region. And this is, has a more homogeneous sedimentary rock over the whole area uh, and it's Devonian, mostly Devonian sandstones and some erodible shales and siltstone too. Here you can see some shales and siltstones in this creek being eroded away as we speak. So we have mostly Appalachian oak forest, right? A lot of the oaks here and there's some at the higher elevations you get some Northern hardwoods too especially towards the Catskills. And here we have agriculture is, is sort of intermixed with woodlands. We have the forest here is fragmented by agriculture, there, but there are some larger tracts of forests. Uh, we have some nice state forests, Thatcher Park is there, uh, some land trust preserves, and then where you have the steeper slopes, you have um, woodlands on private land. So here's the Allegheny Plateau, and you can see the Catskills in the background there. All right, the last one is 83, the Eastern Great Lakes Lowlands. And this, if you look at the whole state, this extends way out to the Great Lakes, all the way down to Lake Erie. And then up around the Adirondacks, Lake Ontario, all the way around to Lake Champlain. So it includes a little bit of the, of the Champlain lowlands up there in Washington County. And the uh, Mohawk Valley 
there in the just in the eastern part of the lowlands with Schenectady County, um, Western Albany County, places like Altamont, and up into Saratoga County. So within the whole Eco region, you have a moderating effect. The climate is moderated from the lakes. Uh, and there's also increased precipitation from lake effect. But that lake effect is less evident here on the eastern side at the eastern extent because um, oftentimes the lake effect doesn't get all the way down. Sometimes it gets all the way down to this area, but not always. Here's the Mohawk River with some really nice ice jams. So it's, it's mostly flat, but there are hills and there are some uh, glacial deposits and some rock outcrops. There's lots of wetlands in the Mohawk Valley. Um, in, in the capital region, there's one main river, the Mohawk, and tributaries that go into it, like the Schoharie Creek, Lysakil Creek, and others. And then in the north, in the Champlain Valley, you have Lake Champlain on the border there. This is a shot of the Mohawk River looking west from Kiwanis Park on the bike trail. So again, we have mainly sedimentary rocks, limestone, shales, and sand sandstones, similar to the Allegheny Plateau to the south. <clears throat> and uh, not as more erodible than the, than the harder rocks in the Adirondacks to the north. This is the Christman Preserve out in Western Schenectady County. So the forests uh, were originally a sort of a combo of um, coniferous and hardwood forests, but like uh, many forests, their composition has changed over time. It's true for most of the forests here in the Capital District by invasive species, things like killing off the ash, uh, hemlocks, um, invasive insects, and of course, deer browse. So the Mohawk Valley has been intensely developed for agriculture. Here you can see an uh, aerial view, sort of the west of Glenville. There is significant forest cover, but again, it's highly fragmented. You can see the mosaic there of agriculture and, and woodlands. And there's some urbanization here too, smaller towns, but uh, some small cities also. And then of course, things are separated by roads. All right, so that's the description of the ecoregions in our area. Now let's go down to a smaller scale of ecological community. And these are also called natural communities in some states. <clears throat> so what are these? They're a distinct assemblage of interacting plant and animal populations in a common environment. They, rec they occur repeatedly across the landscape. So you'll see the, in the background there, you see a red maple swamp. So you'll see red maple swamps in different parts of the capital district. And these communities often integrate with each other. So uh, next to this red maple swamp, there is a shrub swamp and that could integrate into the red maple swamp. Uh, forest ecosystems often integrate with open ecosystems. No two are identical and change is constant. So if you had a red maple swamp here one year, you uh, the beaver might come in and make it into a lake. So they're always changing. Here you can see the ecological communities of New York State publication that was done by the Natural Heritage Program. This was started in the 80s and uh, continued uh, the, into the latest iteration, which is March, 2014. There's a QR code if you wanna get the publication there. And just to show you that New York 
has these ecological communities defined, but also all the states around us do too. So you can see each state has their own publication and website about the ecological communities or natural communities in their state. The one in Vermont is very nice. Uh, there was one just done in January, 2023 on the lower right of the wetland types in New Jersey. So <clears throat> I don't have the Massachusetts or Connecticut ones up here, but you can go to their websites and take a look. Now, sort of like common names with plants, not all the communities in these states have the same names as the ones in New York, but they're fairly similar. And of course, some states have different ecoregions, so they'll probably have different natural communities also. Now, how does all of that information come about? Well, for decades, the Natural Heritage Program and its ecologists have been out in all the habitats around the state, taking data about what these communities are comprised of and classifying them. Up in the upper left, you see Greg Edinger. He's the chief ecologist who's been working for a long time with the Natural Heritage Program and, and is the one who, who has written the latest version of the Ecological Communities publication. And this was a, uh, these pictures were taken during a time when a lot of wetland work was being done. And you can see they lay out uh, 10, 10 by 10 meter squares and take a lot of data within those plots. And then in the lower left, you see taking soil samples and plant lists. And so there's a lot of information that goes into the, uh, the databases in the Natural Heritage Program about communities. And they're also all mapped. <clears throat> the significant natural communities and the rare natural communities. And then they're classified. So I just wanted to show you how the classification works. And you have systems and subsystems, which are kind of like families and, and genera. So you can see that the systems, the, the, the largest a classification, most general. These are the systems. Over on the left are sort of the scientific names, and on the right are the common names. So you have marine systems, the ocean. Uh, then you have tidal, estuarine, tidal ecosystems, which are freshwater or um, saltwater ecosystems or brackish, as long as there's a tide. So tides come all the way up the Hudson River. So we have freshwater tidal systems. Rivers and streams, lakes and ponds, those are the <clears throat> riverine and lacustrine. Palustrine means wetlands, so all the different types of wetlands around the state. And then on the lower right are the uplands or terrestri uh, uh, terrestrial systems. And then there are subterranean systems too, which are down below this slide, like caves and the animals, usually just the animals that live in the caves. So we have natural ecosystems and we have cultural ecosystems. So ones that occur naturally and also ones that are uh, human made, like roadside ditches and uh, reservoirs, things like that, instead of a natural lake. So there's a total of 260 of these natural communities around the state. Then if you look at the subsystems, you have on the left, you have the systems of the wetlands and uplands. And the subsystems consist of uh, the common ones in the capital region anyway, are open mineral soil wetlands, mineral soil as opposed to peatlands, dirt, uh, and you have forested mineral soil wetlands. And you can see the different kinds of wetlands you get in open marshes, fens, shrub swamp shores, and then forested wetlands would be things like floodplain forests, swamps, vernal pools, which are under forest canopy. And then the uplands consist of open uplands, barrens and woodlands, and forested uplands. So and those depend on what percent cover of forest you have. So less than 25% cover, you have things like 
grasslands, cliffs, outcrops, meadows, fields, and then 25 to 60% cover of forest you have of trees. You have pine barrens, woodlands, rocky summits. You can see on the lower right there, that's the pine bush, the Albany pine bush, and that's a, that's a barren, so it's not complete forest cover. And then forested uplands of six, over 60% cover. And those are our forests and things like successional hardwoods, which also there's a lot of successional hardwoods where uh, forests are coming back where they have been cut in the capital region. Now you'll see these subsystems and communities also in other books, but they may have a different name, again, different common names. For example, in Yuli Lorimer's book, under each plan, he has a habitat. And so you can see here his habitats in the smaller font, rivers, pond shores, pond margins, wet meadows. You sort of categorize those into open mineral soil wetlands. And then categorize each one of, of his habitats into the subsystems in New York. And then we have other categories too, which people who are res doing restoration or planting natives want to select plants based on these. And these are, again, from um, Dark and Ptolemy's book or Lorimer's book. And these are non-ecological community-based sort of uh, ones that are other categories like water regime, whether they're evergreen or deciduous, the colors, the habit, the ecology, what they do for wildlife, what they provide for wildlife, if they're useful for consumption or the people like the fragrance. And at the bottom of this list, you have deer resistant. And I just wanted to mention that specifically because, again, our forests have been really changed over the last 30 years uh, by the increase in deer. And you can see on the upper right photograph there is a forest in the Hudson Valley, which is uh, devoid of, of an understory. There should be a lot of tree seedlings in there, wildflowers. This is in the middle of the summer. So you see things that deer don't eat like sedges and ferns. <clears throat> but uh, it's not a condition that you want. And it's also very difficult to go out and collect. If you're into collecting seed from native plants, it's very difficult to collect seed because the plants just aren't there. Or uh, the understory has also been taken over by invasive species on the lower right there, where you see just a, a morass of bush honeysuckle in the forest understory. And these things kind of work together sometimes where the deer eliminate the native species and then the forest understory becomes crowded out with invasive species that the deer don't eat. Also, these uh, communities are on the Natural Heritage website under the Natural Heritage Conservation Guide. So if you Google Nat New York Natural Heritage Conservation Guides, you get to these, and they're for animals, communities, plants. And so if you click on the communities, um, you'll get descriptions of the communities. You also can find in the book and on the website there on the lower right, you'll see the orange arrow pointing towards the key to e ecological systems and subsystems. So if you're trying to figure out what kind of system or subsystem you, system you're in, you can use this key. And it's a pretty simple key and it'll get you down pretty quickly to what subsystem you are in. So for example, if you go all the way down to barrens and woodlands, if you're in the pine bush, Then you can use the advanced search in the guides. And on the lower left, you can put in ecological communities and barrens and woodlands and submit that. And you'll get a list of all the barrens and woodlands in the state. 
So you can kind of use that to narrow down which kind of barren and woodland you're in <clears throat> by sort of looking at similar communities and eliminating things like serpentine barrens and rock, I'm not on a rocky summit, I'm not in a, uh, in a, an ice cave talus community. So you can eliminate some of these, but it's not totally easy to figure out the actual community you're in. So under each description, you have red maple, for example, the red maple hardwood swamp. If you click on that, you'll see you, you get a table of contents with uh, all these different categories of information about each community. So there's lots of information about each community. And they have lots of nice photographs, multiple photographs to, to show you what they look like. And then they'll have lists of plants, which uh, are the common plants in that community, which is very helpful. <clears throat> also, the similar ecological communities, if you're not really sure what community you're in, and then how the vegetation plays out by layer. Uh, this community is mostly trees, it's got shrubs, herbs, and non-vascular plants, what the mosses and liverworts. Also, you can look at rare and significant natural communities in your area if you want to see some. Uh, you can go to the Environmental Resources Mapper uh, in DEC. There's a QR code for it. And you can see like the pitch pine scrub oak barrens in the pine bush. Here, the tidal river of the Hudson River. Over here in the Rensselaer Plateau, very large hemlock northern hardwood forests. And then along the Taconic Ridge, you have extensive beech maple music forests. So other people have tried to also provide plant lists for different uh, ecoregions and, and natural communities. So for example, the Native Plant Greenbelt Native Plant Center on Staten Island, if you go to their website, you'll see uh, they have done some plant lists by um, subsystem. Here's one for an upland forest, the moist to dry upland forest. They have trees, shrubs, like can't scroll down the whole thing, but they'll have all the different kinds of plants there. So that's interesting to look at. There are There is a group of people here in the Capital District which is will, will be writing a, a similar uh, plant list for different ecoregions and um, and uh, subsystems, systems and subsystems for the Capital District too. Then uh, the National Wildlife Federation has something called the Keystone Native Plants, which I think was dug by, done by Doug Talamy. Now they do it by Eastern Temperate Forest, which is ecoregion eight within the Temperate Forest. So that's that huge uh, uh, one, uh, ecoregion one or level one. And you can see they put in some plants there at the bottom, which are Keystone species, which host plants and you know, insects depend on. And of course, a lot of these are native to New York and some of them are because it's in such a large area. So you always have to look at these lists and decide, are these lists good? Do they contain native plants to New York? And you really have to, to really examine these lists closely. So for example, they also have the native plant finder and on the upper right, you see it's it's in beta form, so it's not completely done yet. And so if you put in your zip code, you see there in the orange arrow showing my zip code, and this is what comes up <clears throat> when I hit the enter button. And it has uh, these plants here, and you can click on those and get lists. Not all of them are native, but then, whoops, down here in that circle at the bottom, it has lotus. 
deer vet shifo, which is a non-native plant from Europe and Africa. So that's a bird with trefoil. So somehow I told them about this. And if you see any errors, you can tell them about it and let them know because they're still trying to figure out how exactly this works. Again, always examine carefully your plant lists. And if you really want to make sure uh, in those plant lists what's native to New York, you can go to the New York Flora Atlas. And that will help you decide what's native and what isn't. And you can click on your county, that map in the middle, you can click on the county. This is from the New York Flora Association. And it'll give you a list that you can download. You can see up in the upper right, it says download search results. It'll give you a list of plants in your county. And there's a column there for native. So you can click on that column and it'll sort them by native and non-native. Give you the family, the common name, and also uh, if it has a photo here. And they have lots of photos of lots of different species. So this is really helpful in knowing what's native. And then if you click on a species like northern wood sorrel, Oxalis montana, it'll give you a habitat and also a map, a county map of where specimens are uh, have been seen or collected from around the state. So, for example, this one has a habitat of cool northern forests. Uh, it's often the dominant herb in uh, northern forests. So, for example, if you look at Rensselaer County and Green County, it's in those counties, but probably in the higher elevations, probably in the in 58 eco region near the Catskills and up on the Rensselaer Plateau, versus down in the Hudson Valley. So those are some tools that will help you find some plant lists for these ecoregions and natural communities, but we're still not there in, in, in making it easy to do that. So these are some tools that I think are still needed. We need uh, a way to find all of the ecological communities in your ecoregion, not just the, the common and the rare ones that have been mapped. We want to know um, we want to know how how to know what community you're in by keying or entering dominant plants. So there's a key to the subsection, but there's no key yet to the actual communities themselves. It would be nice to have a list of plants by level four ecoregion. Bee plant does it by level three. Uh, so you can imagine there's a lot of plants because level three, for example, the Hudson Valley is part of level, uh, part of 58, which goes all the way up to um, Canada, so to Nova Scotia, I believe. So there'll be lots of different plants there. And you, you have to sort of narrow those down by looking at the, the plant atlas. It'd be nice if the plant atlas did list the community and subsystem that those plants were in. Uh, the Northeast Seed Network has a list of workhorse species. It'd be nice if those were by ecoregion and community. So let me know uh, if you know of any other needs that you would like to have for finding out what plants are in these ecoregions. There's also the list of nurseries. It'd be nice to have that offer ecotype seeds or plants. Here you see uh, on the Wild, Wild Ones website, they have a map of nurseries, native plant nurseries in the capital region. So it's always good if you're going to these nurseries to ask them where those plants are from, if they know what ecoregion they're from, uh, what's the provenance? Are these, were these seeds collected in the capital district? Are they from other nurseries outside of New York or way outside the ecoregion? All right, that's a lot of information. And uh, That's all I have for now. Let me know if you have any questions.